I think Bluey might be the most perfect show that has ever existed. Hey, brother. Yeah, brace yourselves. We're talking about Bluey because in case you missed it, the most recent and undoubtedly most monumental episode of Bluey, The Sign, just debuted earlier this week. And I, for one, have been itching to discuss Bluey on this channel for quite some time now, as I think it's probably the best thing to happen to parenting since, like, those little silicon bibs that, like, catch all the food. Like, game changer. Seriously. As much as you think it's a show for kids, I think it is first and foremost a show by parents for parents. And, like, kids will obviously just also enjoy the duck cake out of it because it's so perfect in every way. But what I've really begun to appreciate about the show is not just the endearing moments, the life lessons, or the absolute gut punches. I mean, are you kidding me? Did we need to have a whole episode about how Chili's sister can't have kids and it's the one thing she wants most in the world and it's been so difficult she's barely seen her nieces in four years? But hey, look, Bingo and Bluey got onesies and it's making Bingo go crazy. Hooray! That episode though, Onesies, is a great example of what I'm getting at though and what I've started to appreciate so much about the show, which is how it goes about storytelling. Almost every episode is told from Bingo and Bluey's point of view, and they're usually trying to overcome some aspect of childhood in a fun, creative way with mom and dad helping out as much as they can along the way. But while Bandit and Chili are both extremely prominent characters in the show, rarely do the episodes focus on them or their problems. And yet, those problems do exist. They're just not what's in focus. To the careful observer though, and with the help of hindsight, you can see that they do have lives outside of just helping Bluey and Bingo, and what's happening in those lives can affect how they parent. Hey, Hila. And never has this been more on display than in The Sign, the behemoth 28 minute episode that is sure to wrench tears out of your face holes. And I mean all of them, not just your eyes. So today I'm gonna to break down why Bluey is the best show ever as we walk through The Sign. I'll cover all the Easter eggs, all the things you missed, all the little payoffs, reveal the secret plots in Bluey, and just honor the masterpiece that is The Sign. This episode of Super Carlin Brothers is called Bluey! All right, so before we can talk about the sign, first we have to talk about the episode that came right before it, which also dropped as a solo episode just a week ahead of time, Ghost Basket. This episode of Bluey is called Ghost Basket. Ghost Basket shows Bingo and Bluey as Rita and Janet, AKA the grannies, AKA my favorite recurring game in the show. <laughs> They are trying to prevent their home from being sold to Chili while Dad plays Realtor. But despite their best efforts, including Rita pretending to haunt the house as the ghost basket, Chili decides she wants the home to the great sadness of the grannies who now must leave. Get those grannies off my lawn! But then it also turns out the house apparently is truly haunted by the ghost wheelbarrow and all is saved. And as the camera zooms out, it reveals to us, the audience, that even though this was a game, the healer's house actually is for sale. And I kid you not about the very loud and audible gasp that escaped me when I first saw this. Like all of my kids were watching with us and they were like, Dad, what, Daddy, what, what? <laughs> this episode of Super Carlin Brothers might actually be, will Jay make it through without crying? What's great about the setup though, is that while the episode presents as any other, just Bingo and Bluey playing a game, the final shot reveals that it's not Janet and Rita who are worried, but Bluey and Bingo who are nervous about moving, or really maybe more specifically, Bluey. It looks like just a game they're playing, but it speaks to the larger plot. Not something most kids shows like this really take into account, but Bluey absolutely shines in its attention to continuity. Which brings us to the sign and all of its glory. Even the title has several layers to it, but more on that in a bit. 
As the episode opens, we learn that Trixie and Radley are about to get married in the healer's backyard. Frisky and Rag get married right on this spot. And this whole thing was actually set up back in season two in the episode Double Babysitter when Trixie and Radley were accidentally double booked to babysit the girls, but they end up doing it together and quickly begin dating. In fact, in the very next episode, Christmas Swim, you can see they decided to skip family Christmas in favor of going on a trip together. So things clearly started moving forward pretty fast. But again, that's all just in the background while the episode's actual focuses are on Bluey being nervous about going to bed and also getting a new toy at Christmas. This is Bartleby. Back in the sign though, the healer's realtor is showing some dogs with no eyes, their home, which Bluey is not happy about despite the games of Ghost Basket. Are those dogs with no eyes going to buy our house? She quickly starts complaining about it in the car, where in the background, you actually spot Bingo playing the jumping game Chili teaches the girls back in Road Trip. Just use your fingers. But as the car ride continues, we also start to learn that Chili is not that happy about the move either, which makes sense. She clearly has not been planning on this being part of the family's journey and thought they'd be staying put for a long time. See, back in the episode Stumpfest, we hear her say she wants to put in a pond in the backyard, hence the reason for the Stumpfest. Oh yeah, that's true. I want to put in a fish pond. Then in the episode Tradies, they actually do put in the pond, which is really not the kind of project you do if you're thinking of moving like really soon. Then we see Bluey at school, which is one of my favorite scenes. I mean, geez, just this answer from Calypso when Bluey asks why all stories have happy endings? Well, I guess because life will give us enough sad ones. This episode of Bluey is called Too Real Calypso. Anyway, after that, all the kids in the class volunteer sad situations from their life. Yeah, like when my guinea pig ran away, my mom's told me he might come back. I don't know if he caught it there, but he said moms, which is just a nice little bit of inclusivity there, and I just thought I'd point it out. Then Sweet Winton says his mom doesn't live with his dad anymore, who's now lonely all the time, but it sounds like maybe he does have some romantic prospects of his own. How mom likes your dad. So in an effort to cheer everyone up, Calypso reads the class an actual Chinese proverb called the farmer, which explains that no event in and of itself can truly be judged as good or bad, lucky or unlucky, fortunate or unfortunate, but that only time will tell the whole story. In the story, a farmer loses his horse, which is bad, but then it brings back new horses. Good. But then his son rides one of the new horses and gets hurt. Bad. But because he's hurt, he doesn't have to join the army. Good. And this sets up the format for the rest of the episode. Each small event lends itself to a larger picture in unexpected ways. Also, I just want to point out that after the story, Jack shouts out, Why didn't he want to join the army? And that's actually a callback to the episode Army, where Jack becomes best friends with Rusty as they play Army at school. And it's his favorite thing because it helps him focus because he has ADHD. So this tiny comment is actually a very sweet nod to his friendship with Rusty. Meanwhile, though the healer's house does get sold to the dogs with no eyes, although they did want a pool. And Bluey is now laying on the guilt thick and Chili is having a hard time coping as well. Aw, oh, Chili. By the way, I also love the absolute number of stuffed animals on Bingo's bed here. Like, I'm not sure if this is a reference to another episode, but it do be how kids be sleeping. Anyway, the next day is the wedding, which like props to the healers for offering up their house to host the wedding the day before they move, geez. But while they're setting up, Uncle Stripe reveals that Uncle Rad is planning on him and Frisky moving out west after the wedding, something Frisky is just hearing about now. What? Rad, come on, bro. Seriously, how could this not not come up. Is that why you don't have a wife? Anyway, Bluey is skipping flower girl practice due to sad about moving, but Muffin tells her she just needs to get rid of the sign. No sign, no sale, right? Easy peasy. And fortunately for her, Frisky wants the sign down for the wedding too and comes to help and Bluey thinks her big time. You're the best fairy godmother in the world. Which this reference is also a line back to when we first meet Frisky. Frisky is Bluey's fairy godmother. And I think by that they mean Frisky is just her like godmother and that's Bluey's spin on it, but I'm not entirely sure. However, before the sign can come out, they're interrupted by Rad calling to confirm the bad news about moving and Frisky calls off the wedding, kicking over Jeremy for good measure. Jeremy getting knocked over is also something of a running gag in the show. Ow. Ah. Ah. Poor Jeremy. 
Then, back in the house, all the adults can be heard humming the tune to the epic hit Cat Squad, the theme song of an in-universe kids show of the same name that definitely wasn't my personal second most played song on Spotify last year. Literally. Yes, it was. I have an image. Ba 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 da ba Cat Squad! Guess who controls the radio in my car? Not me. Cat Squad! But from here, Chili and the girls decide to go hunt down Frisky and oh my god, long dog sighting! Right, this is fun. In case you didn't know, a version of this dog appears in almost every episode of Bluey, so always be on the lookout for it. It's basically an episodic Easter egg. Also, also in the shot, you can also see Chatter Max, Ben and Chili's least favorite toy, which you can often spot that they have hidden away from the kids somewhere in the house. Anyway, as the search for Frisky begins, so does Bluey's version of the Chinese proverb from earlier. First, because all four girls have to come, Bluey gets to sit up front. This is the best day of all my life. Good! But because she's sitting in the front seat, it leads to them getting pulled over by the police. Bad. But then it turns out the same officer pulled over Frisky and is able to tell them where she was. Good! to the juice shop. But as they turn into the juice shop due to some bad luck, they can't see Frisky's car, so they can't confirm she's there, which is bad, but they decide to go to look around anyway and miss out on seeing her by just seconds. But Bluey does find a random coin on the ground, which is good, right? I mean, it doesn't help with the Frisky search, but I guess we'll see. And hey, since they're at the juice shop, Chili gets everyone some watermelon juice, which is something I'm now wondering, is this available somewhere? I've never heard of watermelon juice. Where do I get this? Because I want one. Having juices though leads to another important revelation of sitting in the front seat, which is that Bluey gets a cup holder for her drink. Oh my God, amazing. But then it makes Muffin jealous and she tries to use the center console as her own cup holder, but spills her drink which is bad, but upon stopping to clean the car, Socks spots Frisky's car at complete random. <gasps> Look! Ah, Frisky's blue car! Good, and so they take chase, but now Socks has to go potty, which is bad. So they lose Frisky and all seems lost, but when they stop, a butterfly flies into the car. Oh, hello, Flappy. Good to see you again. But it's not just any butterfly. It's the very butterfly Bingo and Lila save from Bandit's big old butt in Slide. Poor Jeremy. But what's crazy when you go back and watch that episode is that in Slide, Bingo declares the butterfly is lucky. That's lucky. And it is lucky because a few minutes later, Chili has to stop again to let the butterfly out. And when she does, she sees a sign, like a literal sign, not like a sign from the universe or something, but still, you know, title, layers. Also, do you see what they did there? That's a literal butterfly effect. Anyway, the sign reminds Chili where Frisky might go in times like this, a place they... I used to come up here as teenagers to, um, think. <laughs> Was that a pot joke in Bluey? <laughs> yeah, it definitely was. But either way, they do find Friskier and are finally able to talk to her and convince her to go back to the wedding, but not before Bluey offers up the coin she found to her cousins to use the binoculars at the lookout. Oh, so it turns out finding the coin was good, or it was going to be good, but it gets jammed so they can't actually use the binoculars. So was it bad? We'll see. And we'll see is the exact same realization Chili and Bluey have with Frisky. Neither of them wants to move, but they don't know for sure it will be good or bad. They'll just have to see. We'll see. But in the meantime, it's time for the wedding and the guests are arriving and oh my God, is that Chili's sister who's pregnant? See how I set that up earlier? Yes, it is. How did this happen? I need answers. Also, also, if you didn't notice, the guy performing the ceremony at the wedding is also the DJ at the wedding and also the guy that Bluey bought a song from with her money from their first lost tooth. Who likes to dance? All right, y'all. Now we need to take a quick pause right there to give a huge thank you to today's sponsor, Bespoke Post. In case you're unaware, Bespoke Post curates a monthly box of awesome, and this spring they have got a great new seasonal lineup for warm weather. One of which, and my personal latest box, is the On Tap box, featuring the 64 ounce growler that can keep your drinks cold for 36 hours, and it comes with this pair of stainless steel cups. 
So Beth and I have this cocktail we like to make for picnics, tailgates, lake days, anything outdoors. It's a crowd favorite every single time. We simply call it Jug. And you better believe this guy will be everywhere with a summer loaded with Jug. In fact, maybe I'll leave the recipe in the description down below. You're welcome. But whether you want to drink and eat more awesome, dress and travel more awesome, or just explore more awesome, Box of Awesome has you covered this spring. Plus, with each Box of Awesome, you're supporting small businesses. 90% of everything that comes in your box of awesome is from a small up and coming brand. And you can get a free mystery gift with your first monthly shipment when you sign up at boxofawesome.com and enter the code SUPER at checkout. That's boxofawesome.com SUPER at checkout for a free mystery gift in your first box. And he's the guy who plays the PVC pipes with the flip flops. Like, what a seriously multi talented fellow this guy is. Anyway, the wedding goes off tremendously well and also provides an answer to a long standing bluey theory that there their grandfather Bob or Baba was dead. See, he actually appeared very early in the show in season one in the episode Grannies, where he learns to floss and then promptly disappears for over a hundred episodes, even though his wife continues to be featured all the time, leaving many fans to wonder like, what happened to him? But at long last, we have an answer. He was off in India trying to find himself, which I have to say, Nana seems none too impressed with. But also, also later on at the wedding, you can see them both flossing on the dance floor, which is just like the best callback. Then after the wedding, Rad announces to everyone that Frisky and him aren't moving. And he tells Bandit, You worry too much, little brother. After Bandit asks if he thinks that he's making a mistake by not moving. Which actually brings me back a few episodes to Relax and Stick Bird. These two episodes happen back to back and the healers are on the same vacation in each one. In Relax, Chili is oddly out of sorts, unable to have fun and just chill despite being alone on the beach reading her book. But eventually she gets there only for Bandit to then seem to be stressing about something in the next episode, Stick Bird. What's odd is that even though Bluey helps him work through it by the end of the episode, we never find out what was bothering him, but whatever it was clearly comes on strong because in Relax, he seems totally fine. But now with the power of hindsight, we know exactly why the parents were all stressed out on their vacation. It's because Bandit was considering taking a new job and they were worried about accepting it and needing to sell the house and possibly uproot their family. And like that whole secret plot is happening right in front of you. But of course, all you're watching is Bluey and Bingo play together and work through their own problems. And that is really often what parenting is like. Like the show is told from the kid's point of view and they're the main focus most of the time of the parents. However, this doesn't mean they don't have lives of their own to live as well and big decisions to make that might affect the whole family's future and are bigger than that game of stick bird your kid is playing. But the crazy thing is that to your kid or to bingo in this situation, stick bird or losing stick bird is the most important thing happening to them. Like they just don't have the same scope as you. And what makes Bandit such a good parent here is that he realizes that the loss of Stickbird to Bingo is as big an issue for her as deciding to move his family is to him. Which then brings us back to the day after the wedding when the sign is back up and the house is sold. Okay, I guess maybe they're not moving that day, but it's still pretty soon after, like so closer than I'd host a wedding at my house for. Either way, it takes the movers in the house taking the furniture to the truck for Bingo to realize that selling the house means that they're not going to live there anymore and she is quickly on the I don't want to move train. Is Layla coming with us? Well, no. <laughs> that line got me, you guys. Fortunately for Bingo though, she has Bluey who comes to comfort her with the Chinese proverb from earlier. And as she does so, we get a nice aerial pan back to the lookout where we learn that the greenie, the balloon from mom school, is somehow still alive and well floating around out there. But we also re-encounter the dogs with no eyes who want to use the binoculars at the lookout but don't have any change. Have you got any coins? No, who carries coins? Only to discover the lodged coin Bluey got stuck there and they somehow managed to work it out so now they can look for the new house they just bought, which as a reminder is the healer's house. However, while they're looking, they discover a different house is for sale. 
one with a pool. But what's more fun is, remember earlier when I said Winton's dad had some romantic prospects of his own? Our mom likes your dad. Well, it looks like that relationship is going really well because Winton's dad is the one selling his home so that they can all move in together. And also, also, actually, actually, you can see when those two first met back in the episode TV Shop. Do you see how there's always like a secret story unfolding in the background? But then what is extra crazy is that they meet because Bluey is dancing on the TV store monitors and causes the other kids in the store to dance and run around and knock a bunch of stuff over. And if she didn't do that, those two wouldn't be dating and that house wouldn't be for sale and the eyeless dogs wouldn't change their minds. But they also wouldn't have if Bluey didn't get the coin stuck in the binoculars. So everything that happens is actually all down to Bluey. Because sure enough, the house of the pool tempts the sheepdogs away from the healer's home, which Bandit interprets as the sign not to move and just, God, I love this show. I'm sorry if you've watched it and you didn't cry, you're wrong. I mean, it doesn't help that they play some like seriously emotionally manipulative music here, which maybe is what Bluey is listening to right here. But also, also as a final little Easter egg here, this shot is probably quite familiar to you as the album art that no doubt also made it to the top of your Spotify list last year, finally making its way into a show. Did I mention I love this show? And yes, I mean the show in general, but also this specific episode is just an absolute masterpiece and quite possibly the best single episode of television like I've ever seen. Just the absolute number of like significant, meaningful payoffs you didn't even know were happening and the way the background stories all come to fruition at once and how the kids are like so central to it. And it's not just that the kids are central to it. It's like recognizing that even though they're just kids, they have real impacts on the people People and the world around them in like very unseen ways, while also recognizing that those impacts are heavily influenced by the ways that Bandit and Chili are guiding them through all of their various situations. The seemingly like private family moments they're having in their house radiate out in this like positive way into the greater world. Which with that in mind, I've seen some commentary about this episode that it's something of like a cop out maybe, like not making the family move, which is the more realistic outcome in this situation and something the show doesn't usually shy away from. And while I suppose that's true, in real life, you'd probably move. I think that is also missing the point because the reason they're moving at all is because of Bandit's new job, which- Pays a lot more money, which means we can give you kids a better life. So with the decision not to move, the show is really asking, what does it mean to give your kids a better life? Money? Is more money in a new place a better life? I mean, sometimes the answer might very well be yes, but for the healers, they're already surrounded on all sides by community, friends, and family, and they seem financially secure. What more could they possibly hope to gain? Like, it might seem like they avoid progress and choose to stay put, but the real progress is the realization that they're already exactly where they need to be. And also just for what it's worth, it's also not a cop out because if you were really paying attention, you could have known the entire time they weren't going to move based on the episode Daddy Drop Off. This is the episode where Bingo and Lila meet and it is a result of Bandit stopping and taking every opportunity to play with Bingo and Bluey before and on their way to school, despite clearly being very desperate and stressed out about not being late. And yet the extra time he takes and the final game he does with Bingo leads her to becoming friends with Lila, who they show Bingo remains best friends with all the way through graduation. So obviously based on those photos, the healers were never going to move somewhere away from Lila because as I hope I've demonstrated to you, they clearly have a plan when they're writing this show, which I stand by, I think is just a truly perfect show. <laughs> 
Guys, I hope you enjoyed our first ever Bluey episode. I would love to know in the towel section down below, what is your favorite episode of Bluey? And if you haven't watched it, oh my God, please go do it. And if you enjoy Bluey, you might also enjoy Ben and I's podcast, Popcorn Culture, where we just tell lots of stories from our lives, especially about parenting and being dads. And I can't promise we're always as good at being dads as like Bandit. In fact, I can promise that we're not, but you know, we're stumbling our way through it all the same. And I think you'll really enjoy it. You can check it out right here. Hope you do. Hope to see you there. Otherwise, Ben, I will see you in another life, brother.